Damien Riley. Riley spraying it out wide now for Kevin Meehan. Here's Jack Brady. Brady out in front of his man. And plenty of height on that one. It's dropping in and over the bar. And that's an excellent point from Cavan from Jack Brady on his debut. Ronan Flanagan, the cornerback, drifting forward. Plenty of support, but he elects to go back to Eugene Keating. Keating turning away from danger. Feeds it back out to Ronan Flanagan. Well, it's confident from Cavan so far. Givney with the offload, and Keating to pull the trigger and have a go. And he backed himself all the way, and he was absolutely right to do so. And the Cavan supporters are enjoying this. What a lively start by this young Cavan side. And a terrific point landed by Keating. Donegal have possession back here with Carl Lacey, the bank official driving into Cavan territory, being tracked by Fergal Flanagan. Mark McHugh, two exams this week at Sligo IT, so he's had a busy time of it. Paddy McBrearty lays it into space, and this is encouraging from Donegal. It's McHugh with the effort, he made the room for himself, and he got his shot away, and that's a terrific point. Mark McHugh with his opening point in the Ulster Championship of 2012. The winners of this one will take on Derry on the 16th of June. John Brennan, the Derry manager, a very interested observer this afternoon here at Kingspan Breffney Park. Lacey. Now Neil Gallagher. Lots of room here. And it's uh, fed forward for Frank McGlynn. Nobody challenging Frank McGlynn, and he's allowed to surge forward here for Donegal. Has support from Murray Kavanagh, who wrote on the scoring. Paddy McBrearty with the offload. Good passing from Donegal. Will they get an end reward here? Neil McGee getting forward, and he drills it in and over the bar, and he ties up the scores at four points apiece. Well, that just typifies Donegal. Even the fullback gets in on the act here. Great work from Rory Kavna, and McGee, in a very advanced position, puts that one over. Mark McKeever fisting it forward. Ronan Flanagan just caught on his heels there. McGlynn feeding it forward. McFadden involved. This is Rory Kavna. Kavna with Neil Gallagher on his outside. Cutting inside and right footed. Oh, that's a tremendous score from the century man Rory Kavna. It's second of the afternoon. And Donegal lead by two. Anthony Thompson for Neil Gallagher. Lacey getting forward. McGlynn is also in a very advanced position. All very congested through the middle. Donegal trying to work their way through the middle. It's with Leo McLoon. Let's fly. Well, what an effort that is. Oh, what a point that is for Donegal. Terrific point from Leo McLoon. Getting away from his man and right footed. He fairly smashed that one over the crossbar. Mark McHugh sauntering forward here unchallenged. Looking for McFadden. Porrick O'Reilly got a touch to it, but there could be an opportunity here. There could be a penalty for Donegal right on the edge of the large square. And it is a penalty for the challenge on Paddy McBrearty. It's Colin McFadden with the penalty for Donegal. Riley on his line. Oh, that's coolly done. High into the roof of the net. That's how you take a penalty kick. McFadden makes absolutely no mistake. All done a goal right at the start of the second half. Mark McHugh, McBrearty for Lacey, trying to get away from McKeever. Anthony Thompson yet to get on the score sheet in this game. Mark McHugh under pressure, and he has delivered Mark McHugh with a fine point for Tony Gold. The Ulster champions are beginning to settle into a groove here. And this game is in danger of just slipping away from Cavan. Notions of room for David Wall should drive into. Um, and just looking a bit shapeless at the moment. Carl Lacey slipping it on now for Paddy McBrearty. McBrearty on to his left. And uh, what a clever dummy that was. The offloads. Here's a chance for Frank McGlynn bearing down in goal. And McGlynn elects to take his point. Fits it in and over the crossbar. Goal was on. But at the end of all that, the cornerback, Frank McGlynn, getting forward. Happy to take his point. 
Carl Lacey. Lacey being challenged, managed to uh, get his pass away to Mark McHugh. McHugh, that engine is still firing very nicely. Covered absolute miles and miles last year, and he looks like he has the appetite for more in 2012. As Donegal going the attack, and it's Leo McLoon. Plenty of height on that one, and it sails high and over the crossbar. Excellent point from Leo McLoon. Jim McGuinness, the man from Glenties. It is Club Nave Connell to their first ever senior county title in 2005. Early ball in here looking for Keating. He goes down, and the referee has another decision to make in terms of a penalty here. And perhaps a glimmer of hope here for the Breffney men. Cormac Riley signals it is a penalty for Cavan. 113 to 7 as it stands at the moment in favour of the Ulster champions. McDermott with the penalty for Cavan. McDermott slides it in. That's a really confident penalty from Niall McDermott. And Durkin went the wrong way. And Terry Highland is his man in Bally Hayes. From the Lacken club taking on this job. Difficult one. Sloppy from Donegal. They turned over possession. Yes is the answer. Now what can Cavan conjure up here? It's with Jack Brady. Brady for Damien Riley. Damien Riley looks up to see what's on. Eugene Keating. Left footed on the turn. And that is an exquisite point from Keating. Eugene Keating coming out to receive possession brilliantly dispatching it over the bar give me I do just feel that Tony Gall have switched off almost at this late stage in the game McDermott finds Meehan Meehan lifts it in towards the square there's a huge Keating on the turn and Keating right footed and he has posted another fine score well Eugene Keating may well end up on a losing side here but he has been top-notch for the Breffley men today. Well, it's all over at Kingspan Breffley Park. And it's Donegal who progress to a meeting with Derry on the 16th of June. It has ended. Donegal 116, Cavan 110. Mark Litch taking up the responsibility. Back again for his in the lane. A regular over number of seasons Lynch turning oh that is a magnificent pick on any day of the week but particularly on a wet miserable day in County Donegal yes a lovely bit of patient build up that time and Lynn just holding on to the ball until Mark Lynch made the run for him but Lynch if you just watch it this time Lynch just takes a look up knows he's a good shot it looks at the post and put it through it puts it through them that's a great score for Derek over first Frank McGlenn forward from left corner back coming into challenge is Michael Free lays it off Thompson from left half back position scores superbly scored two points in the Ulster final last year he gets his first in this season's quarter final Brian Bradley direct ball up far is Leo McLoon Fatten comes forward Still not bad in danger for Derry. Oh, brilliant save almost by the goalkeeper, but it's in the back of the net. He got a hand to it, but it's Leo McLoon that's going to take the credit. Yeah, I think you've got the credit, uh, McFadden, this time. Just watch the, the, the incisiveness and the conviction that he has in going forward. A fair play to Leo McLoon was right in shotgun and just rifled the net first time. Michael Murphy calls. Tries to get it back for his watch. Neil Gallagher gone inside for the pass. Ops for Michael Murphy instead. Frank McGlenn on the turn. The corner back goes forward and shows that in terms of positions, once you're able to play football, well then you can get into the team. Going forward again is Michael Free. Johnny Gold swarm around him. And through sheer hard work and intensity, win the possession back. Donegal on the counter attack. McFadden is available. So too is McGlenn. What's he going to up for it? McFadden, here's a chance. Rocket! Brilliant goal. Donegal, even at this stage, 
look like they have booked their place in the Ulster semi-final against Jerome on Saturday, June 30th. McLean in the centre, McFadden at the far right hand side. Which option was he going to go for? He went for McFadden, turned inside, unstoppable shot by Colin McFadden. Nobody willing to have a go. And they continue to hand pass around the half forward line. Keelt, back outside, far as Paddy Bradley. Right man, right place. Good score. That's his first from play. And he now has a personal tally of five points. Ryan Bradley lays it off for as Carl Lacey. Late challenge by Michael Freel. Referees allows the advantage. Carl Lacey lays it off. There's a chance of a score at the end of this move. Off the boot of Paddy McBrearty. It's quality football by Gunny Gall. And the Ulster champions are home and host as they have been for about 20 minutes at this stage. And the referee, Marty Duffy, blows the full-time whistle. The agony is over for Derry, but for Johnny Gall, it's onwards to the Ulster semi-final. Full-time score in this Ulster Championship quarter-final. Johnny Gall, 2-13. Derry, nine points. Rory Cavanagh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Carl Lacey again. Sun out in Clonus. The rain has gone away. The wind is still strong. Carl Lacey been invited to come forward. Donegal have their defensive screen in position. Now it's Mark McHugh, and McHugh lets that one fly. And a wonderful score from Mark McHugh. With the defensive system in place, they invited Donegal to shoot from distance. And Mark McHugh from Kilcar opens the scoring. Donegal lead by a point. Picking up the free man who is Sean O'Neill of Tyrone. Owen Mulligan. In really good form. This guy's always in good form. Stephen O'Neill, the Tyrone captain, with the shot. Seemed initially as if it was going to go wide, but that is a really nice point from Stephen O'Neill. Yeah, Jimmy Gillis will be a little bit annoyed about the laxity in the Donegal defence that time. Matty Donnelly for Tyrone. Has to go back, has some support from Owen Mulligan. You heard him scream for the ball. He's got it and then bottled up and got it away brilliantly. And now Donnelly is free. And now it's Joe McMahon. Tyrone figuring out the Donegal cover. McMahon ran straight into Walsh and Dirk and couldn't hold on to it. Goal chance. Donnelly was there and it's just gone wide in the end. Dirk executes a good enough save. Okay, it came at him, but doesn't hold on to the ball. Causes trouble, but good Donegal scramble defence eventually forces the ball out. David Walsh. Powerful runner calling for it was Neil Gallagher. Gallagher's got it. Joe McMahon back at him strongly. And the shot from Paddy McBrearty is a good one. Really nice score. And that's the second good quality long range shot we've had. Mark Donnelly. Goes past Declan Walsh. And Donnelly bouncing off Mark McHugh that time. Matty Donnelly. Just keep ball from Tyrone. It's very impressive. Here's Penrose up from the full back line. Penrose steadies down and buries that. There was a score in Tyrone before half time, and they will go in at the break, leading by six points to five. Ryan Bradley. Bradley to Frankie McGlynn. All very tight. Carl Lacey McGlynn was free. He didn't see him though. Mark McHugh lets it go. Ryan Bradley. Bradley missed one earlier, steadies down and gets that one. And that's a wonderful point for Ryan Bradley and for Donegal. Matty Donnelly. Neil Gallagher again, two big Donegal men coming towards the Tyrone man in possession. And Penrose surrounded by two more Donegal players. And that is... A free out, I think a foul on Joe McMahon. And Colin McFadden in trouble with the referee. Well, I've been in conditions in many respects for the type of uh, tackle he executed there, but it's going to earn him a yellow card for his troubles. I think a little bit harsh, actually. Mark McHugh, that familiar style, off he goes. Must cover an amazing amount of ground in any match he plays. But they all do these days, every one of them supremely fit. Colin McFadden, it's another great 
take from McFadden on the 45. Puts the head down, shoots, and that is a corker of a point. Are they heading towards the ultra, ultra final? Still a long way to go, but that attacking intent there, and McFadden, if you give him the ball, he can do this. There's been a little clash off the ball. Colin McFadden ended up on the ground. He got a yellow card earlier on. He was involved with something with yep. um, Joe McMahon and has got a second yellow and gets the line. So Donegal make a substitution. Paddy McBrearty gone off. Christy Toy, wearing number 20, is in. How much more? The three minutes are gone. But after that lengthy stoppage for the McFadden sending off, the referee will let it develop a little bit more. Tyrone need a goal. Penrose and Durkin with a brilliant save. It didn't go over the bar, it came off the woodwork. Tyrone are not gone yet, but Durkin with a wonderful save. Over four minutes of added time now. Will the referee blow it up? Donegal lead by two, and they are into the Ulster final. Donegal have beaten Tyrone by 12 points to 10. Defending champions Donegal are forced to start without towering midfielder Neil Gallagher. Leo McLoon starts at half forward on a day when Ryan Bradley joins Rory Cavanagh in midfield. But no Eamon McGee, he misses the match through injury and Declan Walsh is among the backs. Down go into today's Ulster final, boosted by the return of Benny Coulter and Dan Gordon. But in late changes, Liam Doyle and Colm King start in place of Danny Hughes and Owen McCartan. In against Neil McGee. Dangerous moment here. And that's the referee deciding not a free kick. This is the run here by Conor Laverty. And the challenge the referee decided was fair and incidental. Frank McGlynn. Very good shot. Rory Bradley puts it over the bar. Well, Jim McGuinness, who, uh, of course, led Donny Gold to a first Ulster title for 19 years last season. Down towards O'Hare, and he's taken down 20 metres out. That's going to be a free in and a chance for Down to get their first point and level up the match. 20 metres from the target. He manages to put it over with uh, minimum of fuss. And the teams are level at a point apiece with 12 and a half minutes gone in this Ulster final. Holland. O'Hare shooting, and that one's gone over the bar. Nice work by Donald O'Hare. Paddy McGrath up there in support. There's a little bit of wrestling going on, as you saw. And the player continue, play continues with Anthony Thompson. And that's going to be a line ball to Danny Ball. The referee now will have noticed what went on just a moment ago there. Well, this is what happened here. A little bit of wrestling going on. And then it continued. Mark McHugh still involved there with Benny Coulter. Benny Coulter becomes the second down player to have his name taken, and all of that in the opening 18 minutes of this match. Ryan Bradley, beautifully done. Here's an opportunity, and yes! Danny Gall back very much in the game once again, and Leo McLoon has got another championship goal. Mark Foley. On here, Ambrose Rogers over the bar. Q kicks it in diagonally inside towards Colin McFadden. Ferocious challenge here with Daniel McCartan, but it's McFadden who's got it, dishing it off here. And that is the lead, beautifully done by David Walsh. 
Kevin McKernan kicking. Wally's thinking about an equaliser at the break, and he's got it. Kevin McKernan. Beautifully taken down by Murphy. And once again, it is Declan Walsh. How about that? McHugh comes forward from that poor kick out and he's put it over the bar. And Mark McHugh from Kilcar puts a goal between the teams. Owen McCartan tries the shot and Owen McCartan puts it over the bar. Well, that's some introduction for a player who hasn't scored in this year's championship yet. And this is his fourth match of the championship in all. And he got that ball fed back to him well there by Donald O'Hare and smacked it over the bar. And Danny Hughes is about to come in wearing number five. And when most people read that during the week, they said, no chance, he's not going to play right half back, he never has in his career. But he's coming on now, and he's coming on in place of Donald O'Hare. Again, it is Danny Goal, it's uh, Michael Murphy. Thundering forward here, laying it off cleverly, and it's in the back of the net, and it's Frank McGlynn who's got it. First time ever to score a goal in the championship, and what a time to do it. He's made it 2-10 to 10 points. Two clear goals between the teams. 51 minutes are gone in Clownis. And Benny Coulter is about to be reintroduced to try and rescue this match for Down, which is a very, very tall order. Dan Gordon holding on to it here. Danny Hughes, his first intervention, and Danny Hughes has put it over the bar. So it's back once again to a six-point game, 2-11 to 11 points. Nicely down here, as far as McBrearty. Daniel McLaughlin shot, and the substitute gets among the scorers. And he's the second substitute to get his name on the score sheet. Daniel Hughes, good stop again by Paul Durkin. Well, he produces wonderful saves. And they are just making down pay time and again. And it's so easy now for McFadden, who's got his sixth. Jim McGuinness, Rory Gallagher, Ryan Bradley and all the rest celebrate. It's all over at Clonus, and this stunning gold team has achieved its own piece of history, winning the Anglo Cell Cup for the second year in a row. It's stunning gold, two goals and 18 points, down a disappointing 13. Ulster champions Donny Gall made two late changes coming into the starting 15 are Eamon McGee and Martin McElhenney in place of Declan Walsh and his name St David on a day when Paddy McFrearty celebrates his 19th birthday and is already the proud possessor of two Ulster medals. It's an auspicious day also for Kerry's Paul Galvin. He's playing in his 50th championship match, which pales somewhat alongside record holder Tomas O'Shea, about to start his 83rd. The top scorer, of course, for Kerry is Colum Cooper, with one goal and 21 points. McIlhenny, in as far as Leo McLoon, got the opening goal in the Ulster final, just about manages to retain some kind of control over that one. Murphy's come very far out into McFadden, looking for the opening score of the match here, and he strikes it over the bar with just under two minutes gone. Big Colin McFadden, who's Donegal's leading scorer in this year's championship. Kerry back on the attack. Declan O'Sullivan, who can be a most influential figure. Galvin here. In as far as Anthony Marr, dodges away from the challenge. Donica Walsh now sending it across here to Kieran Donaghy. Switch of positions for him, gets by McGee. 
Donica Walsh thought the angle was a bit tight. Back to Cooper, he had a better shot at it. And Kerry draw level thanks to the captain, Colm Cooper. Right into the corner here for McFadden to go after. Marco O'Shea's his marker. Up against a very tall player in McFadden. Almost worked out, but not quite. But it's Johnny Gall who will have the line ball. So far, a good cohesive performance by Johnny Gall as that ball's in and Murphy misses, but the ball's in the back of the net from McFadden's line ball. Not sure if anybody actually got a touch. Michael Murphy, the center of attention. Six minutes are gone, and that ball seemed to go all the way in. Don't think it ever touched him. McFadden once more. Frank McGlynn, Michael Henney now. Really good spell this for Danny Gall, and they were unlucky as that one came off the post. Comes back down to Leo McLoon. Back towards Rory Cavanagh. Hitting it is Michael Murphy, and Murphy sends it over the bar. Well, this is a blitzkrieg start to the match by the Ulster champions. Declan O'Sullivan now. Two number 11s tangling. And well, that's going to be a free kick for Kerry and Declan O'Sullivan set to take it fed back to O'Sullivan this is a player who can give great leadership he's got terrific talent and he underlines that with his first point of the match here work the free kick very very cleverly James O'Donoghue playing it across here to Anthony Marr neatly finding Donica Walsh the marking's very loose by Danny Gold. There have a lot of players back there, but they're not doing an awful lot of marking. And that is a brilliant point put over by corner forward James O'Donoghue. Waiting for it here, ready to pick it up, is Paddy McBrearty. Well, he's misplaced the pass because it's that eager beaver, Mark O'Shea, who comes out with it. And Kerry now get their passing game in a muddle. And Leo McLoon plays it out to Carol Lacey. In for McFadden, but he's got to do it on his own here. And he drills it over the bar. Goland, uh, two points now, possibly for Colin McFadden, if he's the one who gets the credit for the goal that Dunny Gold scored after six minutes. Kerry behind. Beginning of three minutes of injury time. Cooper. In as far as Donaghy, back to Cooper, and the hand passes over the bar. Two points in this first half for Colm Cooper. Kerry fans dreaming about a goal. Anthony Marr kicking. And Anthony Marr has measured it beautifully and put it over the bar. Second minute of the second half. So now the margin's down to one, a great kick in front of a crowd of 56,191. Donny Gold player on the ground, the referee allowed an advantage to Leo McLoon and to Donny Gold and to Paddy McBrearty if it works out for them. Back in towards McLoon, got two goals in the championship so far and he's put this one over the bar. Great point by Leo McLoon. Good advantage allowed by referee Marty Duffy from Sligo. Here's Rory Cavada. Slipped inside here, Carol Lacey reaches out for it, runs into challenges, wriggles this way and that. Like a fish in the water, he still manages to stay, stay with it. Back in as far as McFadden, and McFadden kicks it over the bar. One of the points of the game so far. A brilliant score for Danny Gall. McBrearty wanted it. Lacey gets it. Tracking back is Brian Maguire. But it's with Paddy McBrearty again. Steps away from trouble. Boots it with his left. 
and in there to challenge and to put it over the bar is Colin McFadden. He was in the square, but he's allowed to be so from the new ruling. Christy Toy comes on, and Leo McLoon is the one who's made way. 1 9 to 8 points. Donegal by four. And Donegal win the kick out, and it's Rory Cavanagh. Neatly on here. Christy Toy over the bar. What an immediate impact. And the Donegal fans around Grove Park are absolutely deliriously happy with this. Shane Enright cutting through, and there's a fair bit of cutting to do. Out for it came Paddy Curtin. This one is lobbed in, and Donaghy has notched a goal late in the game, and there's still hope for Kerry. And that fan and many more will feel a miracle might yet be on. We're in the 66th minute. It was fed invitingly in here for Donaghy to get a final touch to it. Good ball over, nicely done. Johnny Buckley in for Anthony Marr. Has a go, finds the target and puts it over. It's a one-point game. It's 111 to 110 where Danny Gall were ahead by six, only a matter of about five minutes ago. Ninety seconds, Galvin, Kerry still, a point behind. In it goes, Curtin kicks, and he puts it wide. But there's still time, tenth wide now for Kerry, a miss by Paddy Curtin. Marr reaches, can't take it. Instead, it's Rory Kavanagh. On as far as Carol Lacey. And Lacey can seal it here and probably has. Carol Lacey, the 27 year old from the Four Masters, in his 40th championship match, has put it over the bar. And the referee still allows a few seconds. Galvin has it. It's back to Tomas O'Shea. How much time will be allowed? Kerry need a goal, otherwise they're out. Donegal two points ahead. Donaghy has it, loses it. Donegal have it back. Carol Lacey takes it. They wait for the final whistle. There is the final whistle. And Donegal have beaten Kerry. Fantastic victory by Jim McGuinness and his team. Michael Murphy, the captain. Colin McFadden, who got a goal and six points. The Donegal fans on their feet, enjoying the moment, savouring every second of this. A great quarter-final victory over Kerry. In the end, there were only two points between the teams, and the full-time score is Donegal, one goal and 12 points. Kerry, one goal and 10. There are now three changes in the Cork team that beat Kildare, with the news that Ray Carey and Nicholas Murphy will not start, and will be replaced by Kieran Sheehan and Daniel Goulding. It means Noel O'Leary goes to cornerback, and Fintan Gould to left halfback. Centre-back Carl Lacey plays in his 100th match for Donegal today, while Leo McLoon leads the attack in the 40. But all eyes will be on Mark McHugh and the strategic plan that will develop around him. Potentially, Donegal have the best full forward line in the business, Harry McGuirty, Michael Murphy and Colin McFadden. Two against two up here. The referee blows his whistle, feels the own Cadigan was fouling. Michael Murphy taking the first three of the afternoon and tapping it over the bar. Donegal are up and running in Croke Park in this semi-final. Easily got up by Graham Canty. Toddy Kassan for his own Cadigan. Noel O'Leary gone forward. Kassan. Good play by Cork. Kerrigan is at the end of it. It's a sweet kick. It's a sweet move. And Cork are on the scoreboard for the first time. Yeah, that's a lovely score from Kerrigan. That's probably what you see more and more of Cork doing today. Shooting from distance, not coming into the tackle as much as they might have done in the past. That's an excellent uh, opening score for Cork. Paul Gherkin 
fools everybody, I think, uh, with that kick out. And it's won easily by Paddy Kelly, skipping away on this occasion from Mark McHugh. And on the turn, sends it straight between the posts. Paddy Kelly is his name from Ballancolic and Cork lead for the very first time. again for that long ball up to Michael Murphy. Lays it off, picked up as McFadden on the turn. Scores! Good play, Donegal. And Michael Murphy is a very good target man if they can feed quantity and indeed quality ball into it. And Donegal took their noses in front again by what? Quick kick out from Alan Quirk for his own Cadigan. Put the defender from Douglas on the south side of Cork City in a little bit of pressure. He works himself out of trouble. Cody Kassan now. Flipping it. Kieran Schmidt. Nicely done. Makes the space as a result. Uses the fist to put this over the bar. Good score. That came all the way from goalkeeper Alan Quirk with a short kick out to Owen Cadigan. And it worked up all the way. The length of the field ended up with Kieran Sheehan. pressure again from Donegal. Here comes Rory Cavan. A little bit of space in front of him. Has a pop and look at that. Brilliant score by Rory Kavna. And Donegal are back in front again. That's a fabulous score from Cavan. And it must be said that time he took on the responsibility. He looked to get Murphy with the quick pass. Didn't see it on and took the responsibility. Quick score. Interesting to note that the point guard playing so many kickouts short. It was interesting the first three Neil Gallagher was doing well, wasn't he, Mark? Yes, and they have played the last three short, Mark. Finish. Nice ball from Paul Kerrigan to Colm O'Neill. Nice turn. What about the finish? Quality from Colm O'Neill from Ballyclaw in North Cork. He is a wonderful forward and the sort of ball he's being fed here when he runs onto it and turns is exactly what O'Neill loves. I think that was Kerrigan to put that ball through to him. Just watch it again with the delightful dink pass from Kerrigan. Great vision, wonderful finish. And the breaking ball is picked up by Paulie Kassan. Feeds it into the space for Paul Kerrigan. And away it goes. The speed merchant from Nemo Rangers taking on the challenge. Lays it back, good play. First Daniel Gugan, deadly on the left. O'Neill is good on left or right. Here he goes. And there is another point for Colm O'Neill. He is posing serious problems for Donegal. Two quick balls, two points, one on the left, one on the right. Kick out from Paul Durkin. Oh, great catch by Neil Gallagher. Lays it off to Carl Lacey. Lacey heading towards the 20. He's steadying himself. He's now shooting and he's scoring. Lacey is the man that comes all the way from centre half back. Given any, any sort of space, he will punish the opposition, and that's exactly what he did here. Six points each, six times level. Clever play by Kieran Sheehan. Knocking it back for his Graham Canty. Free is quickly taken by Michael Shields to Kieran Sheehan. Trying to lay it down for his Dinico Connor. The layoff is to Sheehan with speed. Heading towards the 20. Here comes Sheehan. Steadies. Will it curl? Will it curl? It will. White flag raised in Crow Park for Kieran Sheehan's second point of this All Ireland semi final. Wonderful game of football between the Munster and Ulster champions. So, Johnny Goal introducing David Walsh. So, the player that's going off is Ryan Bradley. So, Johnny Goal make a change in their half forward. Yes, and that has happened in every one of the Donegal Championship games this year where Ryan Bradley has been substituted. Now, in fairness, was later on in the games he was substituted, but today he didn't seem to get into the game. Punched down. In the of the field, Lynch against the Royal Cabra. Lays it off as Leo McLean Cabra did well. He was under pressure. Anthony Thompson has gone into the attack. Nice turn. Retaining control. Flicks it forward. Carlos David Walsh. What about the sub? Steadies. Has a go has a score sometimes substitutions just simply work 
about 25, 30 seconds into the game. This happens, given a bit of space, created initially by Rory Kavner, finish by David Walsh. Breaking forward is Eamon McGee, looking around at options. McFadden and Murphy up front. Here comes Carl Lacey. He's done it once already. Holds up the play, waiting for the reinforcements. Slips one through. Nice ball in. Carries Mark McHugh. Will he take his point? Yes, he will. Very good counter-attack play by the Ulster champions. Watch Mark McHugh just look up to see could he slip it to McFadden. Did the right thing, took the score and put Stony Gall into the lead coming into half-time. Michael Murphy stepping aside in the challenge mark McHugh gives it back to McFadden oh it's a thing of beauty it's his third point of the game and McFadden despite being very tightly marshalled and at times the quality of the ball not the best he still is on the form of his life Noel O'Leary wasn't expecting the move at all and Donegal counter attack Lack of concentration means that Frank McGlynn is going forward. To a pass from Aidan Walsh. Frank McGlynn scored. He's done it in Ulster. He's done it in Cook Park. Not bad for a corner back. A point against Cavan. A point against Derry. A goal against Down in the Ulster final. And now one against Cork. It's ten points to seven. Cool under pressure. McCreary. Lays it off to McHugh. Backfires Neil Gallagher. Overfires Neil McGee. The full back. Coming forward is Carl Lacey. He scored in the first. He's done it in the second. What a second half performance by right the Ulster champions. Look at the scoreboard on the top of your screen. Johnny Goal, 11 points. Cork, 7. Level seven times in the first half and Donegal have stretched and Cork haven't scored since the 27 minute of the first half. Well, that's a thunderous second half start from Donegal. They are, the, one, the quality of the running off the ball, the movement from Donegal, but the tackling in particular around the middle area is forcing Cork sideways, backwards, anywhere but forwards and they're fully mirrored their four point lead at the moment. The referee's whistle had blown. Michael Murphy didn't hear it. Very panty did. There's an extra 13 metres for Paddy Kelly. Everything going wrong for Cork. They just seemed a little bit nervous handling in the second half, the early stages. Just a little bit nervous. Here comes Aidan Walsh to settle them down with a score. And it's a really good one. Aidan Walsh with his first point in this All-Ireland semi-final. And it's back to just three points between the teams. David Walsh, Michael Murphy, lays it off as Rory Kavner gets by three court defenders. He's on the 20. His options available left and right. Back to Kavner. Nicely jigging up, brilliant block down. Comes back outside to Anthony Thompson, and that's over the bar. It's the real first goal scoring opportunity for Donegal, and Cork were all over the shop here. And just at the last second, managed to get a touch out, and the ball sent over the bar by Anthony Thompson. That's a wonderful piece of coordinated play at that time by Kavner. Just watch him knifing through the defence, plays it off to Thompson, a little one too. Good save by the court goalkeeper. Thompson, presence of mind, there in the bucket, good score. Paddy Kelly, Kieran Sheehan, having a goal from way out, not a great goal for Colin O'Neill, but he gathers it. He's inside, he's there, he's almost there, comes back up the crossbar. Hot break for the Cork team. Centimeters away from cracking the back of the net, and Tony Gall. Their speciality is the counter attack. Look at this from Leo McLean. In Paris, McFadden. Cork defender is down. McFadden has the time, but he sends it left and wide. He should have scored from that. But what a chance for Colm O'Neill. He did all the hard work. Look at that. Won the dirty ball, got inside, had a crack off the crossbar. Watch. Down first, Kieran Sheehan. Good from here. It's very good. It's his third point of the match, all from play. 
off the boots of Kieran Sheehan. It's an energy sapping contest with nothing at all given or taken. Dunning Gold, 12 out of 19 scoring chances, Cork 9 out of 22. Here comes Michael Murphy. Murphy trying to get inside. Owen Cadigan fouling, and that's a free end for Michael Murphy and for Dunning Gold. Lifetime ambition is to get to that All Ireland final. Is it possible? Certainly looking good at the moment. As Colin McFadden scores his fourth point of the match, his second from a three. And look at that scoreboard. Dunny Gold, 13 points, Cork, now. Colin O'Neill, in the main thread up front. Back out, Ben Paris, Michael Shields. Paul Kerrigan calls for it on the 45. Steadies and takes a shot. And that is a wonderful score by Paul Kerrigan. That's his second of the game. Cork are not gone home yet. Kick-off from Paul Jerkin works out kindly for Carl Lacey. Support player is David Walsh, but he opts for the long ball for us. Michael Murphy taking on Paulie Kassar. Murphy, strong on the ball, what's he gonna do? Coming in to challenge his own Cadigan. Kassar gets a touch, but Murphy's physique is there. Umpire has his hand raised to signal that that is a 45. But Michael Murphy is a very strong player, and it took two court lads to stop him, and they were, I think, happy enough to concede the 45. over the bar. Five points he scored this afternoon in this All-Ireland semi-final. Two from freeze, two from play, and one from a 45. Laying it off as Aiden Walsh. Kieran Sheehan getting by David Goldberg, the referee. He's looking to see who's making the run. Here's a man who can score goals. Colm O'Neill on the turn, quickly hits it over the bar for his third point of this semi-final and just brings Cork a little bit closer. Nicholas Murphy is on the edge of the square. Carl Lacey puts in the challenge. So too Mark McCool. Ball bobbles all over the place. Neil Gallagher. It eventually ends up with Frank McGlenn. Has to go there a second time. Chips it up for Penny McGurty. Away comes Mark McElhenney. Frank McGlenn. They're in the middle of the field at this stage. It's Jimmy Gold. Counter-attack. Soak up the pressure. And then counter-attack. In space, Mark McElhenney. Tapping this over the crossbar. Surely it's Tommy Gold's day in Cook Park. And the Ulster champions are looking good. They came in their thousands from Bundorn, from Donegal Town, from Bally Buffet. Donegal outnumbering the Cork supporters in Cook Park. And they are now beginning to sing. They're beginning to enjoy the moment. David Walsh loses possession. Kieran Sheehan. Cork with one last attack. Down towards Colin O'Neill. He's inside. He scored a goal. 71 minutes, 20 seconds played. And Cork are back at this All Ireland semi final. Yeah, that's a beautifully taken goal by Colin O'Neill. Judged the fight of the ball perfectly. Nipped it beside him and McGee. And the game all of a sudden is back in the melting pot. From a game that Donegal should have won well at this stage. My God, fair to the Cork spirit and their ability to kind of not to give up, they're right back in it. 73 minutes, 22 seconds, the full-time whistle is blown. Donegal are in the All-Ireland final for the first time in 20 years, for the second time in their history. Mark McHugh will celebrate like his dad did 20 years ago, like his uncle James did, like this manager, Jim McGuinness who strategically has developed a game of football that suits his players. They have dreamt, they have worked, they have journeyed together, and they are now there, ready to face on the 23rd of September, either Dublin or Mayo. And nobody, absolutely nobody, can take it away from Donegal. This was richly deserved. Absolutely, Mark, a day for some celebration of Donegal. The power of the collective is what would have come today. A joy indeed for Donegal, despite 
Liverpool and on the East Lake goal. It's Johnny Gold that qualified for the All Ireland final on this scoreline. Johnny Gold, Ulster champions, 16 points. Cork, Munster champions, 